Hello, everyone. We hope you're all healthy and having a wonderful day today. We are your host, Richly. Welcome back to the channel. We're back with yet another informative video. Ethereum, the future of cryptocurrency? What is Ethereum? Does Ethereum have the potential to replace the stronghold of Bitcoin? Before we get started, subscribe if you haven't already. Otherwise, Ethereum price will rise and it will be too late for you to invest. Stick around until the end of the video to know whether Ethereum is going to blow through the roof or crash into the dust. Ethereum, one of the most prominent cryptocurrencies, has more tricks up its sleeve than simply financial value. It's also used to power computer programs. Cryptocurrency is a term that almost everybody who spends any time online has heard about. Bitcoin and other decentralized digital currencies have made cryptocurrencies, and by extension the blockchain, a hot topic for debate, with Ethereum being one of the most popular. Ethereum, on the other hand, isn't simply another cryptocurrency. It's a decentralized computer network that runs on Ether, a cryptocurrency. Ether has a specialized application rather than just being a substitute for the dollar, euro, or pound. Ether is a cryptocurrency that can be sold for cash and is one of the most valuable cryptocurrencies. However, referring to it merely as a currency alternative leaves out a lot of what it is really for. Even though they are frequently used interchangeably, Ethereum and Ether are actually two separate entities. Ether is the money that powers Ethereum, a decentralized computer network that runs apps. We'll use those particular phrases throughout this tutorial for consistency's sake. The Ethereum virtual machine, the cryptocurrency Ether, and gas, which is the real EVM fuel that Ether converts to, are the three levels of Ethereum. The Ethereum virtual machine is a decentralized runtime environment for developing and running smart contracts, often known as decentralized apps. DApps are defined differently by different people, but at its most fundamental level, a decentralized application has no single point of failure. The Ethereum developer pages offer to provide some insight into how Ethereum defines a DApp, which it defines as a decentralized network application that combines a smart contract and a front-end user interface. Because EVM DApps are developed on the Ethereum blockchain, the code, assets, and administration of applications are distributed over the whole EVM network, eliminating failure points. It's not inexpensive to build a shared network the size of the EVM, which is where the Ether coin comes in. Ether is a component of the Ethereum network that has real-world value, and it may be converted into gas to power the EVM. This is when things get a little muddled. Gas is a means of quantifying how much labor the EVM does. Much like kilowatt hours is a metric of spending rather than an actual unit of energy. Gas has an ether cost that anybody using the EVM must pay to commit a modification to the Ethereum blockchain, similar to how a KWH costs a specific amount on your energy bill. Similarly to the cost of electricity, the cost of gas may be regulated so that EVM operational expenses don't become unreasonably expensive or so low that the network is swamped with garbage transactions. Miners that labor to process updates to the blockchain are paid Ether as a method to encourage their effort, similar to how Bitcoin fees are paid. There are some differences, however. The catch is that the individual requesting the transaction can specify the amount of Ether they're prepared to spend on the transaction. The bigger the incentive and the sooner the transaction will most likely be executed, the more they commit. When a user, whether a programmer or a user, wants to submit a modification to a dApp, getting the ratio of ether to gas precisely right is critical. If you try to save money by reducing the amount of ether and hence gas you're ready to spend, the transaction may never be completed. Moreover, you'll be out of the money you put up if the transaction fails. In a nutshell, Ethereum is a blockchain-based decentralized virtual computer. It pays for the cost of running decentralized apps with the cryptocurrency Ether because submitting modifications to dApps by users or programmers necessitates mining by other users. Ethereum is designed to execute smart contracts, which are applications that operate exactly as planned without any risk of outage, censorship, fraud, or third-party intervention, according to the Ethereum Foundation. Don't be fooled by the EVM's name into believing it's exclusively for transaction-based apps like e-commerce, currency exchanges, or identity verification. Smart contracts are only the basis on which the EVM is constructed, 
and there are a plethora of other things that can be done with it. Some of the things being built with the EVM are games like CryptoKitties, Ace Busters, and Ether Dungeon, cloud-based operating systems, document notarization, decentralized news verification, job markets, messaging platforms, social networks. If you're wondering what you can do with Ether, the EVM's cryptocurrency, you may trade it like any other cryptocurrency, convert it to fiat currency, government-issued currency, or use it to run dApps as a user. Everything you do in a dApp costs some amount of gas. Non-fungible tokens, or NFTs, were introduced to the Ethereum network in early 2021 as a new purpose for cryptocurrencies and blockchains. NFTs, like blockchains and cryptocurrencies, is a perplexing notion involving ownership of non-physical objects, with individuals paying obscene amounts to claim ownership of the bits that make up the first Twitter tweet, memes, digital art, GIFs, and other digital items. Because of the ERC-721 NFT token standard, which establishes guidelines for creating unique smart contract tokens on the Ethereum blockchain, Ethereum has become the de facto home for NFTs. ERC-721 tokens allow a person minting an NFT to attach specific data to it, allowing the token to be permanently tied to the digital asset to which it is attached. Someone looking for that token on the Ethereum blockchain would be able to locate a record of the purchase, sale, and ownership that would directly link the token to the buyer. Consider having an NFT like owning an original Picasso. It's one of a kind, but there might be hundreds of thousands of copies, posters, and replicas out there that you have no right to restrict or profit from. There are several ways in which Ether, the cryptocurrency that drives Ethereum, differs from previous currencies, aside from the fact that it's a virtual machine network rather than merely money. Bitcoin had a big effect on Ethereum. Varelek Buterin, Ethereum's creator, was a member of the Bitcoin community who sought to leverage the Bitcoin blockchain to create decentralized apps. He later created Ethereum to test his hypothesis. Because Ethereum currently has the second biggest market cap and price just after Bitcoin, we'll use those two to compare Ether to other cryptocurrencies. To begin with, Ethereum's block time, or the time it takes to solve and add a block of transactions to the blockchain, is significantly quicker. While a Bitcoin block takes an average of 10 minutes to mine, an Ethereum block takes an average 10 to 20 seconds. As a result, more transactions may be added to the Ethereum blockchain in a shorter amount of time. Another significant distinction between the two is the incentive for solving blocks. The Bitcoin reward is about halved every four years, but Ether mining payouts are very stable. This is primarily because unlike Bitcoin, Ether does not have a hard cap. There will never be more than 21 million Ether. Ether, on the other hand, has an annual maximum of 18 million coins. This cap is intended to ensure that coins are consistently regenerated to compensate for currency losses due to abuse, key loss, and human mistake. Because there will be no need for a mining subsidy, an anticipated Ether transition from the present proof-of-work paradigm to a proof-of-stake model, dubbed Casper, would likely result in much lower reward levels, making the 18 million maximum unlikely to be achieved. Casper's proof-of-stake approach transfers Ether's value production from miners to stakeholders, who vote on blocks rather than mining for hashes. Each investor receives a certain number of votes based on the amount of Ether they have contributed. The Ethereum 2.0 beacon chain debuted proof-of-stake in early 2021, although most Ethereum traffic still happens on the energy-intensive proof-of-work Ethereum blockchain. Another significant distinction between Bitcoin and Ethereum is how they handle stale blocks. Stale blocks arise when two independent miners arrive at the same solution for the same hash, but one of the miners submits the transaction earlier due to the internet lag periods in transmitting block modifications from one node to another. The second miner is simply out of luck in the Bitcoin world. Their stale block goes unrewarded and the time and computer resources invested are wasted. Ethereum, on the other hand, pays a partial reward for stale blocks, which it refers to as uncle blocks, ensuring that no one is left out. This is mostly done to balance off the strength of huge mining pools, which have a high probability of pushing small-scale miners into the stale territory, since they can't keep up with pool processing capabilities. Let us know if you think Ethereum is the future of cryptocurrency. What are your thoughts on Ethereum? Ethereum.